What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you being here today. Listen, I wanted to share with you today how I personally implemented my diet into my spiritual practice. And let me tell you, your diet can be a major source of spiritual inspiration, of spiritual energy, you would say, right? Your diet can be one of the most powerful tools, and also it is one of the most simple tools. It might not be easy for you to uh, commit to a diet change, right? But nothing that was good in the end was easy. You have to work for it, possibly, but it's a simple, simple thing to understand and begin to implement. And the reason why simply a diet change can be so profoundly life-altering is because you eat every single day. So if you can find out a way to make every single little morsel of food that enters your body a spiritual experience, okay, then you will open yourself up to a whole new world instantaneously, right? just by making a conscious change in your diet. And there are different ways to go about this, but I want to tell you mine specifically. And I don't give health advice, so you know what I'm saying? I just wanna give you um, sort of like a background, informational, like my own personal experience sort of thing. But I'm not giving you health advice or whatever. But listen, I, know what is mine and what is not mine, all right? The only thing really truly that is mine is my choice. I have a choice. I have a choice, but not even my own thoughts are mine, right? Like I have to pick and choose my thoughts. Let me, I'll tell you, this is kind of like a secret. Nobody really talks about it, you know, but, but that voice that you hear, if you have an inner voice, that's not your voice, okay? Listen, you are um, the most exquisite, the most profound and complex piece of technology ever created in the universe, period, okay? That voice is not yours. It's a communication device, basically, right? That allows you to communicate with the higher source of intelligence through what we call thought forms, Okay, but those thoughts aren't yours and they may come from multiple sources. And the only thing that is yours is the choice. You get to choose which thoughts you're going to claim ownership over. And most of us live a life of complete chaos. Sometimes we feel lost, we feel torn, nothing really, nothing really makes sense. You know what I'm saying? None of it really makes sense. And that's because you're not aware of this fact that you're able to choose your thoughts. So you may have a thought come through and you assume that it's yours. And if you assume that it's yours, you assimilate it into all the other thoughts you've ever had and it manifests as an action. You know what I mean? A behavioral pattern. So you have to be careful in picking and choosing. But the analogy that I like to use is like, just like fishing. Sometimes I might reel in a thought, right? A thought may roll by on the silver screen of my mind, right? I may hear a thought. And if it's not just right, if it doesn't meet the right specifications, I'm going to release that thought. I'm going to let it go free back into the sea of consciousness or whatever you want to call it. But sometimes I might reel in a fish and it's a real beauty, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's like that perfect fish. I'm going to take this one home with me, you know what I mean? I'm going to claim ownership over this fish here. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm trying to get at? So not even your thoughts are your own. Everything is borrowed. That's what it is. It's not even a gift. It's borrowed. Everything is borrowed. You asked for it. You said, I'll give it back to you. Don't worry. So all of the time, it's not yours. It's borrowed time. That's you got to return that. You promised that you would give it back. You know what I'm saying? All of the food that you're eating, huh? you said, I'll give all of that back. Everything is a gift. Everything. The air you're breathing, you said, I'll give that back. That's why you breathe like you breathe. That's why you have a, you take, and then you give. And it's an even thing. 
it should be an even thing if everything is working out right for you, right? Everything, there's this give and take, you're in this exchange, you signed the deal, baby. You know what I mean? Um, now you're here, and you gotta give back everything that you borrowed. And the only thing that's yours is the choice, you can't give that back. After you make the choice, it's set in stone. You know what I mean? You can't give that back. That's what's yours, but everything else is borrowed. You have to give it back. And what you want to do is make sure that you give it all back before your time is up, before you are told that you have to give it back. How much are you still holding on to? How much will you still have to give back after this? You see what I'm saying? You can give it all back now. Just give it all up. Let it go. Let it go. Okay, everything, any title you've given yourself, don't label yourself anything based on a diet or your job or nothing. No, you're not. You're not that, whatever you call yourself. You're something way different than that. Like I told you, you're the most complex, exquisite piece of technology in the universe, okay? Now listen, let me get into this diet thing. You have to understand that you sign this agreement, that you will return everything that you take from the plant. Now, we eat a bunch of artificial food. We think that we're excluded from this rule because it's artificial. It's not organic, okay, that it didn't come from God, okay, that it came from whatever. I don't know. It's man-made. No, it's not, bro. Everything you use to make it is still from God. You're just disobeying some things. You're switching it up. You don't, you're doing it on your own terms. You want to make your own food. You know what I mean? So you do that, and unfortunately, because um, because you're not God, you don't have the magic ingredient called life. So all the food that you can make that's artificial or man-made, ain't got no life in it. Simple. And you need to eat foods that have life contained within them because your cells get all of their information. Your cells, the things that are assimilated in mass that give you this form that allow you to live. Yeah, those things, you got to return those to. Those aren't yours. This body isn't yours. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, you, yeah, you got to turn it all your five senses. Yeah, you got to return those. Uh -huh. um, you can get them back again if you choose to do so or whatever, but that's that's on you. All you got is a choice, but you won't be able to take it back, you know what I mean? Um, now check out anyway. Let's get back to this food thing. Yeah. You need food that God made that has life in it. Because if you don't eat that, your cells will forget how to reproduce. You won't be giving back anymore. Okay? Because check it out. I'll get there. 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 So, your cells, they forget how to reproduce. And those cells that forget how to reproduce because there's no life in the food that you're eating, those cells that forget how to reproduce refuse to die. And those cells that refuse to die sometimes come together and form clusters in the body that we call tumors. Sometimes those tumors can become cancerous in the right environment. You see? Okay. Now, how can you get back when you eat food? How will you be giving back what you eat if you eat a certain type of food that has life in it? Well, it's simple. When you poop, there will be life in it. Your poop will fertilize the earth instead of killing the earth because you've been eating food that has death in it and no life in it. You see what I'm saying? You're eating death. So, of course, it's going to kill things. Okay, now check it out. If you went out you ate fast food for a month straight and then you pooped in your yard, Wherever you went to the bathroom, it would kill the grass. So you would give nothing back. You would actually take. That's all you probably do is take, 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 take. You know? So, because of that, you can see it's toxic. It's toxic mucus that is coming out of your body. And that's what everybody's sending down the pipes. You see what I mean? Now check it out. At a certain point in human evolution, human beings live primarily off of plants. So you know Yes, yes, yes. We were not always the apex predators of the planet. We weren't always super smart and super advanced with guns and rifles or even bows and arrows and spears. Sometimes we just had just rocks. We had to really wait for a long time to get the right opportunity to take down some large prey animal like a bison or something like that. And the groups that did that, they would have to follow those prey animals sometimes, follow the herd for months on end. And it was much easier for us to simply 
do what we were professionals at and identify all of the different edible plants. And it was super easy to identify the, the low hanging fruit from the trees. And this was what our main source of nutrients, this is where it came from, food that has life in it, right? Animals have life in them. Animals have life in them. But the food that has life in it that you don't have to chase, it was typically it was easier for us to get. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't run from you. It doesn't scream or whatever. So we would eat that. It has seeds in it. Then you go poop on the other side of base camp, come back in three weeks, and there's a garden. Huh? There's more stuff, more life, life in abundance right there. It came out of your behind somehow like magic. And it was like magic to our ancestors. This is how we discovered agriculture. And we used our own feces as fertilizer. You see what I'm saying? But nowadays, because there's been a change, a rise in a certain type of diet, our waste is actually waste. It actually kills things. Instead of fertilizing and creating life, it destroys life at a cellular level. You see what I'm saying? Now, like I said, this whole game is about giving back. It's obeying and then giving back everything that you borrowed, which is everything. You borrowed everything. So how can you give back with your diet exactly like this? It's a simple shift in your diet, a simple change in the things that you eat. Eat things that have seeds in them. Like, okay, you just have to change the diet. If you like to eat meat, eat meat then, dude, eat meat. But look, a lot of the times when you go somewhere, meat is like your main course. But meat might be your favorite thing. You know what I'm saying? And your favorite thing, the thing that you enjoy the most, you signed up for this thing specifically and you said, look, uh, okay, yeah, I want that. Please allow me to have this. And then sometimes out of gratitude, you will have a moment where you say, and you give it up like you sacrifice it, all right? This is what happened in the Bible with the story of Cain and Abel. Abel brought the choicest cuts of his meat, of his firstlings, of his flock. He brought his favorite part of the meal to God and said, here, this is for you. I'm sacrificing this today in your honor. And God was pleased. But Cain brought fruits or vegetables, something from the ground. That, and the ground was, it was very easy in those days to work the ground. Things just were in abundance, you know what I mean? And it was something that he knew he could have all of the time. But those choicest cuts from the first things of the flock, you only get those at once. Once, dude, it's the firstling of your flock. You only get it once, so you give it up. You see what I'm saying? Out of gratitude. So even though meat might be your favorite thing, sometimes you might give it up. Another example from the Bible is Daniel. Daniel fasted at one point for 21 days, and during that fast, he ate no meat. Huh? He only ate beans and vegetables. And this was because the king had offered... Um, I don't know if I want to get into this all the way, but the king had offered Daniel his best meat, right? Uh, the best of his pigs and, and or his hogs and all of this, right? But Daniel had to refuse because unfortunately the king would sometimes occasionally feed his enemies to the hogs, right? And then those were his choicest hogs. Like this was your like once in a lifetime feast with the king. He's giving you the choicest hogs. But Daniel serves God and according to his belief system, He's not allowed to ingest blood like this. So he had to had to say no. And he came to an agreement with the king and was like, basically, look, bro, I promise you, me and my men, because Daniel was like a trusted advisor to this king. He was like, me and my men will be stronger and better, more fit, um, you know, than your men will be after the festival, after they have filled up on your meat and we have filled up without it we will be um in better shape than them and they proved it you know and um but he told his guys he said make sure that the day we go see the king you know you you anoint your hair or like slick back your hair you know get it looking good and wash your face put on your best clothes we have to look our best because we made this agreement right um and indeed yeah he showed the king that he indeed looked a lot better a lot more healthier brighter had a had a bigger smile you know looked like he was in better shape he they even worked harder you know because they were working for god they weren't working for the king they were doing this for god you see what i'm saying so sometimes it's necessary you make these sacrifices but daniel was blessed dude daniel was blessed daniel's the one that got put in the lion's den and was able to walk out you know what i mean Mm -hmm. And then the dude who, who tricked the king into putting Daniel in the lion's den, he got put in the lion's den. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, it's a great, uh, great story I thought. Anyway, man, getting off top. <sighs> but yeah, the intention is where it's at. If you, when you eat, however many times a day you eat, you do it with this intention of giving back to the planet, giving back to God what you have graciously borrowed. You know what I mean? Then it becomes a spiritual experience. You're making this sacrifice and you're making this sacrifice daily. So you will be rewarded daily. You see what I'm saying? Um, anyway, man, until next time, I hope you continue to free your 